Thank you for agreeing to meet with us. We're so excited that you will be appearing in our inaugural newsletter for the Diversity and Inclusion Department at the Bar. My pleasure. Congratulations on your recent appointment, Thank Judge you. Allen, and we look forward to um, following your, uh, your career as you advance and move on into the future. So will you tell us about your experience serving in the United States Armed Forces? Sure. I served from 1983 to 1986. I was in the United States Army. Um, I enlisted. I uh, went in as a PV-1, the lowest rank that you can be. Um, I served primarily at Fort Ord, which no longer exists. It's now a um, university uh, there. So I was at Fort Ord for my permanent duty station, which is by Monterey, California. Beautiful place to be stationed. Um, my MOS, which the military folks who are watching will know, means Military Occupational Specialty, was I studied for Air Defense Artillery Operations and Intelligence. Um, when I got to my first duty station at Fort Ord, I was told that there were no billets for women in that specialty. Um, so I was asked, do I want to be a truck driver, a cook, or a mechanic? Uh, or no, I'm sorry, truck driver, cook, or uh, work in admin. So um, I grew up around a lot of mechanicking, so I said, well, I'll be a truck driver. And they said, well, that's good because we need somebody in admin. And I promptly was sent over and put in front of a typewriter and required to type for a while. But good news was I uh, very quickly got on special duty as a photojournalist, so I spent most of my time as a photojournalist. Fantastic. And what are your thoughts about the recent lift of the ban against women serving in combat? Well, I think it's fantastic. I think that everyone who enters into the military should have the option to be in whatever military occupational specialty they think is best for them, as long as they're able to meet all the criteria that are required. So if you meet the criteria, male, female shouldn't matter. Everyone should have the same opportunities. And when you compare your level of fitness compared to some of the men you served with, how do you think you uh, compare? Well, that was a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was very fit when I went in. I was really concerned about basic training. Um, and I, you know, I grew up on a ranch and hauling hay and that sort of thing. And I was, in, as much as I could be at that, during that era, involved in sports. So anyway, I was pretty fit. And I grew up with a lot of brothers and um, whatnot. So I was fit and I was ready. I had prepared. Uh, so I was always, um, they call it maxing your um, PT, physical therapy, no, phys PT. I, I don't remember what it stands for, PT test. So women had a lesser standard, which um, I didn't like. And so I always uh, maxed out on the men's standards. Thank you. <laughs> So, what's on your nightstand right now? What books, literature are you reading, and what books, art, movie, or literature, or theater have inspired you? Well, uh, right now I don't have a whole lot of personal time for my own reading. Uh, magazine reading is about the best I can get. I love my sunset. Um, but I have two children, uh, and we do a lot of reading with them, so I've been reading with and listening to my kids read a lot of kids books. So right now I'm learning a lot about Ninjago characters. I know all about Ninjago. If you have any questions about Ninjago, I can, I can help you out with that. Uh, the last book I read was when I had vacation this summer, and that was um, Blood, Sweat, and Gears, which is a great book written by a local man about a trip he and his family took across Canada, um, all in one fell swoop on their bicycles. And uh, it was inspiring, <laughs> but uh, I don't think we're going to be doing that anytime soon. Thank you very much. Do you have anything else you'd like to add? I really think that, though I'm very happy with how my life turned out, I think it really would have turned out different had the rules been different when I was in the military. Uh, in part, I did get out of active duty because I was gay, and I just, I just really struggled with the closet. I was out of the closet before I went in. Um, I was not entirely in the closet when I was in uh, active duty, but it, it had its difficulties. Um, and then when I got out and I went to the reservists, um, I was told that uh, I would not get promoted because there were no promotion uh, 
slots available for women, that all those slots were reserved for men, even though it was doing psyops, psychological operations, and it was primarily just um, printing off the flyers that get dropped, at least in the old days, that's how uh, it was done, flyers would get dropped. Um, was definitely not combat duty, but because the facility in which you sit, uh, the truck, the trailer and whatnot, would be near um, active combat, it was considered combat duty and I, I wasn't going to be able to get promoted. And I'm not the kind of gal who gets told that she's never going to get promoted no matter how hard she works, so I left. And I think I probably, uh, there's a good chance I would have stayed active duty, if, uh, but for the ban. Uh, the ban on gay soldiers, and in um, my duty as a reservist, I, I definitely think I would have continued had that um, limit not been there, uh, which means I would have been retired by now. <laughs> and maybe on to this second job, but I don't know. <laughs> but collecting that nice um, second income. So, and I loved being a soldier. I, I, it was great. I really it fit me pretty well, so it's uh, great now, uh, but there, there's a little bit of that what if that just mm -hmm. sort of s sits there. Well, thank you so much for sharing your insights, and congratulations on your new position as a circuit court judge in Multnomah County. Thank you very much. <laughs>